Hi, YouTubers. I'm going to tell the story today of how I am my mother's daughter, and I was raised to a certain certain extent in the self-sufficient lifestyle, and then I went just about as far away from that as you can get, and then I came back. So a story in three acts. My mother's name was Carla Emery, and she's an author that many of you know from her book, The Encyclopedia of Country Living. She was born at the end of the Great Depression. She was born a, a Montana farmer's daughter ahead of the baby boom. So she was the among the later Depression era babies. Um, and in the early 70s, she was essentially homesteading in Idaho with her husband who was uh, from Idaho and she was from Montana. And the way she tells it, these people started showing up without any skills. These hippies who wanted to live off the land but didn't know what they were doing. And she took it upon herself to create an encyclopedia. And it became this huge challenge for her, which she uh, wrestled her entire life, attempting to put down on paper not only the skills that she knew, that she had experienced, but the old timer skills, all the skills required to live an agrarian lifestyle at the time that those skills and, and practices and bits of knowledge were just being erased from the common consciousness. I don't know that she had any idea that she would become a television personality as a result of that. Her time of real notoriety was in the 70s. Now some of you were around in the 70s and some of you weren't. I'm one of the ones who wasn't. I wasn't around in the 70s. I wasn't around when my mom was driving around the country with her goat in the back of the van with the five kids and taking her goat on television shows and milking her goat on national TV. Um, I wasn't around for any of that because I'm her youngest child. I'm the youngest of seven and I really wasn't born until uh, that era had, had to some extent passed. Shortly after I was born, most everything that could go wrong for my mom went wrong. It was just crisis after crisis. There was a major health issue for my father. There was an issue of, of financial losses. There was a flood. There were also uh, some social pressures. There were some people who were not happy with what my mother was doing when she started a school of country living. I had a commenter say on a previous video that there may be some kind of a, of a spiritual warfare effect when you, when you are leaving. It's almost as if the, the system kicks back and, and resists your power to leave. And you, we all have our different ways of understanding that sort of thing, but I feel like my mother really experienced that. She became a lightning rod, this kind of power source for people to regain independence and freedom. And it kicked back on her, um, and she experienced a lot of hardship as a result of that. So for those of you who have only read the Encyclopedia of Country Living, um, it may be heartbreaking to know this, but I was raised um, the child of a single mother in apartment buildings in town. So my parents were divorced when I was five years old, and from my age five to 15, we lived um, a pretty meager existence um, mostly in town. We didn't have animals. We did have gardens here and there. Um, but it was a, it was a hard time for my mom. It was a bleak time. She had six kids under the age of 18 when, when, um, my father left. So she, and she didn't have a lot of income at that point. She had had success in the seventies, but the audience that loved that back to the land, concept in the 70s really changed in the in the 80s and 90s that the whole country became more interested in glitz and glamour and ba really getting back into the rat race in the 80s and 90s there just wasn't a lot of appeal for alternative lifestyle all that time so as a child i associated the lifestyle of self-sufficiency and return to agrarian roots with a lot of heartbreak and a lot of loss. And I've thought since then, when I was an early young adult, I thought, well, here's the thing is that I, I don't like 
to garden or I don't like to have anything to do with off grid or prepper because I had such a difficult relationship with my mother and that's what caused that. She passed away when I was 25. 10 years later, I'm living off the grid. I'm doing my best to regain and reestablish the same skills that she so carefully um, documented in her Encyclopedia of Country Living. I'm right on that track. And now I realize that it wasn't that it was a mistake that I was confusing my relationship with my mother for my issues with the lifestyle. It's You can't separate them because the thing about lifestyle is that you are what you do and you are what you think and you are how you live. It changes you. So having that conflict in me growing up between my mother's passion for a homesteading lifestyle and the spiritual wholeness associated with that and then this force from the world saying that isn't a, a functional way of life, that isn't, it doesn't work, it it leads to poverty, it leads to heartbreak. I carried that like a that division in me um, all the way through my teenage years. And it manifested in difficulties in my relationship with my mother. We did make up more or less before she died. Um, we always had a little bit of a electricity between us, two very passionate personalities, but um, when she died, we... We were on good terms. So the, the funniest thing about the story is that I would never have made it back to the land on my own. I probably would have carried that kind of fracture forever um, as my mother's legacy, except that I married. I, was, I, I married quite young, but I married someone who, in our 30s, I developed his own passion for living off the land. And as a couple, we found our way kind of side by side into this lifestyle. But I would never for a minute have made the leap if I hadn't wanted to do that in order to give my husband something that he wanted. So there's a, a beautiful generational story there about um, some brokenness in the previous generation really being healed to a certain extent in this generation. Um, and then bringing that around to this tremendous sense of gratitude towards my mom. You know, it's, it's November and the time in which people say thank you. And it's also three years this month from the time that we uh, bought this piece of land. And I'm remembering that our real estate agent had a copy of my mother's book, one of the old ones from the 70s. And when he realized who we were, he really helped us out in terms of getting the best possible deal on our land. Um, and I just, I think of my mother looking down from wherever she is and saying, you know, having appreciation that her legacy, as much as it was hard in the 80s and 90s when her, her mission was very unpopular and it was very embarrassing and hard to be the child of this kind of notorious prepper. Um, she really was able to leave me so much that's tangible and so much that is of greater value than I ever dreamed when I was young. So it's nearing Thanksgiving and I'm saying a, a big thank you to my mom. Thanks mom. And thank you all for watching.